It was about a year ago that the great downpour came to the state of Michigan and wiped out thousands of acres of homes, livestock, farms, bowling alleys, and unfortunately it also wiped out the great vinyl collection of none other than our Steve Carlson, one of the greatest, nicest guys to ever get in front of a camera and talk about his record. Steve Carlson, you got you got to follow Steve Carlson if you don't know him. So he lost all of his records in the flood and in the middle of the COVID lockdown, a flood, what else, what else could go wrong? Uh, and the vinyl community banded together to help Steve out and uh, I sent him a little something. People sent him records and some GoFundMe money and now he's got like this huge collection again. Like in in a few months he built a great collection. So uh, that is a testament to the uh, generosity of all you folks in the vinyl community. And now Steve is doing a thank you video contest about saying thanks, especially to people who've given you records. So that's what this video is about, me talking about five or six videos, uh, records and stuff that people have given me. So uh, this lighting, how is the lighting okay guys? There's a little bit of a thing going on there, but I think we'll, I think we'll live with it. All right, let's look at some records and stuff, starting off with something from the vinyl community. Chavez Ravine, no, that's not the artist. The artist is Ry Cooter, and this came from none other than Mazzy, Norman Maslow, and I've won only two of his contests. And he sent me his choice, which is he loves Ry Cooter, and I'm from Los Angeles, and uh, so I like the Dodgers, and he likes the Giants. So uh, Chavez Ravine is a record by Ry Cooter, in which he tells the story of how, see that devil guy? That's the evil white man who came and took away poor Hispanic uh, people and kicked them out of their homes so they could build Dodger Stadium. It's a really interesting record. It's kind of uh, collage-y. There's talking and sound effects and music and uh, great uh, photos and artwork. One of the first nice gifts I got from somebody in the vinyl community. Most of the gifts you're going to see here today are from people that I know or not vinyl community. Here's one of the weirdest, rarest records ever and it's one of the worst records ever. What record is that? Is that a rare Rolling Stone record that only a hundred copies are made and I have a copy and I could sell it for thousands of dollars? Um, not exactly. This was a, a gift to me from an insurance agency that we did some business with and they said they had a record year thanks to us so they sent everybody this record and I'm probably the only person who played it because the guy knows I'm into turntables. So I played it and it's like a really terrible three minute commercial read by somebody in their office like here at the Acme Agency we offer superior service, you know, one of those type of deals. But that's a great cover shot because nobody knows what that record is and I've got a lot of people threw them away. So, because <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Uh, let's see. My brother-in-law gave me this. He actually one of those kind people, when they move away, they give you all their records. So you got, you got to let everybody know that you are uh, the record collector. And he gave me and my family, you know, 30, 40 records from his early days as a rocker. Uh, UFO, Strangers in the Night, the live album. What a great, great live album by a band that just isn't that well known in America compared to Europe, I guess. But I don't know hot in here. Okay, moving right along. The most generous person in the entire vinyl community uh, sends me stuff every once in a while. And this is not a record. She sends me a bunch of CDs and they're probably out of my car. But none other than DJ Trish. Shout out to DJ Trish in the beautiful Jersey Shore. And when someone sends you stickers, what do you do? You put them on your notebook. So this is my music notebook of failed video ideas that someday I'll make or I'll probably just forget about them. Thank you DJ Trish giving thanks to one of the most generous people in the vinyl community. Uh, here's a record that somebody sent me all the way from Switzerland and it is um, Florian Arbenz. Am I pronouncing that right? He's a Swiss drummer. He's considered one of the top 
uh, jazz drummers in Switzerland. That's a postcard that I snuck in there. So I interviewed him on my uh, channel eight, ten months ago, and he was nice enough to send me a record after the fact as a thank you. I never have asked people for anything in return, and a few have sent me records, but the busy, big-time musicians don't have time, so that's okay. But uh, Greg Osby, American saxophone player, and Florian Arbenz and Stefan Speicher, who painted this as they played the music, and it's a three-way, uh, it's a three-way, it's a three-way collaboration between two musicians and one visual artist. There he's playing the drums. Florian. I met him on Facebook, and I said, "Hey, thanks for friending me. Come do an interview on my channel." I think that's how it went down. Okay, family. What does family give each other? In this family, we give each other records and record-related stuff all the time. And my son, I'm pretty sure my son gave me this. He gave me two or three. Uh, Gary Clark Jr., great blues guitar player. I didn't really know him until I saw him open for Eric Clapton a few years ago, and then I got kind of into him. Great, unique blues style and songwriter and singer. This is live in... North America. How many of you have been to North America? It's worth checking out. Thank you to my son. He also gave me this for last Christmas. A 7-inch jazz record. How many of those are there? Nels Klein and Julian Large. Nels Klein is the guitar player for Wilco now, but he's also a very accomplished sort of out there jazz musician. And uh, Julian Large has a new record that's just coming out on Blue Note like this week, but I've got a single from them. And it works as a fan also. And speaking of fans, my biggest fan, my wife gave this to me 30-ish years after the fact. Uh, when Harry Met Sally, this was a movie, a rom-com that we really enjoyed when we first uh, got together. I guess we were already married at the time. But uh, Rob Reiner, director of Spinal Tap, and uh, Harry Connick Jr., this kind of launched his career and uh, if you're not sure what this is, it may contain music. This is the soundtrack, mostly Harry Mc I mean, mostly Harry Connick, but there's some really classic old jazz tunes on here. Stomping at the Savoy, Don't Get Around Much Anymore, I Could Write a Book, Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. Uh, one other thing that my wife gave me. It's not big enough, it's only a pamphlet, it should be much bigger. It's, it's a little notebook for me to write in Things that annoy me, uh, it has to, this is the first of many volumes, and the act of writing them down is probably good for the, um, the psyche. Is that the word I'm looking for? Things that annoy me. I think she would rather I write them down and tell her about them. I think that's the reason for the book. So, clever idea. Uh, anything else? Oh, yeah, the big gift that she gave me. I'm sorry. I think this was a birthday gift. It's an actual Les Paul. See, it says Les Paul. She gave me a Les Paul for my birthday one year, a few years ago. It's actually an Epiphone ukulele, and she just reminded me like t two days ago that it's electric. I totally forgot you could plug it in. I don't think I've tried plugging it in, but... If you guys want to hear these two chords louder, 